This leads us to our next topic. As we've just heard, there's a real crisis between Israel and Poland. It's not new. Relations between the two countries hit a low with the passage of the Holocaust law in Poland last year. And this delicate issue still continues to plague relations between both countries. Here to discuss the rift between Israel and Poland are two former Israeli ambassadors to Poland, Tzvi Ravner and Gershon Zohar. Thank you for joining us. And born in Poland. And both born in Poland, yes. So, Ambassador Ravner, let's start with you. For our viewers who may be unfamiliar, can you explain what the law that Poland passed last year entails? Well, the, uh, in essence, the, uh, the law uh, that passed last year in uh, Poland uh, criminalized uh, anyone who might claim that uh, the Polish nation as a nation, as a people, uh, as a country, uh, has uh, collaborated with the Nazis, uh, criminalized. Uh, after uh, quite uh, a controversy uh, and the liberations between the countries, uh, an agreement was reached uh, later on last year, mm -hmm. uh, according to which there was some kind of a compromise, according to which the uh, academic uh, freedom uh, to research those painful issues was uh, guaranteed on the one hand, and the Poles have uh, dropped the, the, uh, the paragraph of crimin criminalization mm -hmm. uh, of uh, such uh, historical uh, claims. Let's jump a little into the past. Ambassador Zohar, you were the Israeli ambassador to Poland in the 1990s, when Israel was just rebuilding its relations with Poland. And Poland in transformation. Exactly. And, and so I'm curious, how would you characterize Israel-Polish relations back then? <clears throat> So, uh, um, it's incredible to summarize it like that, but as a w one word of introduction, mm -hmm. uh, we have um, a unique bond, 900 years of joint history of po uh, Jews living in Poland, about 900 years, even that in its complexity they lived along the Polish nations. There was some uh, like partial separation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then came the, the trauma of uh, the catastrophe of the Holocaust on Polish soil. Also, Poles were one of the European nations that suffered the most from the Nazi occupation. And then there was a revival after the communism, uh, as we say. So uh, there was a quick process of reconciliation, in a way, which came into expression in very broad, people don't know that, who are not experts, a broad volume of uh, bilateral relations. Uh, political, um, economic, uh, defense, history, and cultural. And to the extent that in the uh, years two of 2000, to some extent, uh, the Polish nation accepted uh, the Jewish heritage as a part and parcel of the Polish uh, heritage as large, not mm -hmm. longer anymore, just to, to, uh, as a memo in memoriam for. And the concrete example of this was, of course, the erection of the um, uh, Pol uh, Polish Jewish history in Warsaw, mm -hmm. which is one uh, of big value. But also, as I have some, myself, a bit of cultural background and um, studied uh, still as a child piano in Poland. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, um, we can say that the re particular uh, cultural relations between the two countries are extremely rich. They are touching in a way also the, uh, the tragic and sensitive uh, history, like in co-productions of movies um, related to the Second World War and occupation. And at um, the same time, in music, in, uh, in, uh, in theater, for mm -hmm. example, yes. So we can say in theater also there's contemporary notion, but also, just to give two examples, touching the tragic fate of Jews in Poland. The example will be that a um, show, a Polish theatrical show called Our Class, it was uh, brought and um, presented in Israel. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, also Israeli uh, culture is very well, with big interest, accepted in Poland. Of course, the famous dramaturg Hanoch Levin, mm -hmm. who is one of the uh, single uh, foreign playwrights that is presented in uh, Poland. So they are very versatile, extremely exemplary, uh, rich, also cultural relations. Rich cultures, despite this. Edgar, per Edgar mm -hmm. Keret, the uh, contemporary living author, is extremely, extremely popular in Poland, especially among the young people. Mm -hmm. They adore him. So you're saying despite this crisis that we have brewing, or that's despite. been brewing this past year, there's still very rich relations in economics, defense, culture, 
with Poland. Tourism, 200,000 uh, people last year. It can be mm. even said Traveled. that in the perspective of the last 25, 30 years, Poland sees Israel uh, like committed to its national security mm -hmm. in broad perspective. So the Poles were the observers of this. So yes, they are very much committed mm -hmm. to the well-being of Israel at large. So Ambassador Ravner, jumping back to Netanyahu's and Katz's comments, do you think they were unnecessary, especially yeah, given the yes, rich relations? Yes, they were unnecessary. Uh, not only unnecessary, but also the timing was so ill-advised. Uh, I mean, we just had, on one hand, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu participated in, in a very special conference in Poland mm -hmm. uh, with, with 60, 60 countries. There was a coalition uh, against uh, Iran, which is very important for us. Uh, uh, Poland was criticized by many, uh, by the Iranians, by the Russians, for uh, hosting this uh, conference. Um, the Americans, uh, together with the Poles, were hosting it. It was, it was an achievement, a political achievement for Israel. The Poles expected, really, to be... Uh, 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 that Israel should be grateful, thankful for, for their effort. And instead they got the, those remarks whether, I don't know whether the Prime Minister really intended to say so, didn't intend. No one says that we should forget about what many uh, Poles have done uh, during uh, the war. Oh, and of course, no one should forget the, um, uh, those 7,000 uh, Poles righteous among the nations, saved Jews. No one is suggesting that. But why was it so... <laughs> important just on the eve of, of another conference, another mm -hmm. peak in yeah. our relations. That, that was the, the Visegrad, uh, the Visegrad uh, conference that was due to take place in Jerusalem. Why? Uh, by the way, they were also apparently, now we know that they, they meant to present at the uh, conference in Jerusalem, also to present their idea to open a special representation of the V4 in Jerusalem. That's important. We are talking all the time mm -hmm. about the, the need to move embassies uh, 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 and uh, um, embassies and consulates from uh, Tel Aviv to uh, Jerusalem. And here there was another another stone in that uh, wall uh, that we are now, building in Jerusalem. And suddenly, and, and why? Why that? Yeah. What? Why that timing? I honestly cannot understand. So I'll ask just one final question. Given this new clash. How do you see the future of Israel-Poland relations developing? I'll give you, as we speak, a, a concrete example, because uh, in those rich relations. Last year, uh, around, as you were following personally, uh, the uh, new legislation, mm -hmm. uh, humbly, I led Israeli orchestra to an international uh, music festival in Eastern, in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. That was in March. And uh, what I'm trying to say is this mix probably will continue and will follow us. So it was like uh, giving a hand and sharing our music uh, with the Polish audience. Mm -hmm. But at the same time in March last year, that was 50 years for the final uh, kick out, if I may say so, or uh, moving uh, the remnants of the Jew Polish Jews out of the country mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, exactly 50 years. So the Israeli orchestra was there playing, and at the same time, the Polish president uh, had to express uh, his apology for uh, uh, that the communist regime uh, sent out of the country the remnants of the Jews in 1968. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say that this will, uh, this uh, the, the bonds are very strong, uh, cultural uh, as well as uh, as economic. But of course this. Uh, this history, traumatic history, probably will, will follow us for a, for a few generations. And we have to do extreme effort to make the separation between politics, diplomacy, and the extremely uh, tragic history. Great. Ambassador Zoel, Ambassador Ravnel, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Pleasure to be with you.